If you're one of the millions of people who forked over 100 bucks or more for a DNA test kit, did you get the answers you expected? Better yet, did you read the fine print about how your DNA data can be used? Consumer problem solver Connie Thompson has a new reality check about what you're really getting. Connie. Always helps to remember this from time to time. The volunteers at checkbook.org submitted samples to eight different DNA test companies and got very conflicting results. A local researcher says the companies are not giving wrong information. It's a developing science, and you should pay close attention to what happens to the DNA data you're giving up. Checkbook shared this video of their DNA sample preparation. Editor Kevin Brasser and his two volunteers already knew the obvious. Kevin's grandparents came from Eastern Europe. Nicole, an African-American, wanted to learn about her specific connections to Africa. Anna, born in Colombia, had questions about her specific ancestral origins. We found that the companies overwhelmingly agreed with one another at the continental level. So, for example, they agreed that I'm from Europe. They, they agreed that the woman who's African-American was from Africa. But Brasler says details were wildly different when it came to specific regions. They're using a 50% confidence interval, and that means that they're only 50-50 confident that the percent they gave me is accurate. I think bottom line is that these tests are, are not exact. You know, you are, you would get different answers from different companies because they're, you know, probably using different information to interpret your data. University of Washington research scientist Sarah Nelson says it's important to have reasonable expectations about DNA tests. Even more important, consider what happens to your DNA data. Her recent survey of a thousand test users found nearly nine in ten downloaded their raw data and more than five in ten uploaded that information to third-party genealogy sites. That's another reason to really take a close look at what might this third-party tool do with my data. Um, might they make it available to yet another third party? They might do that. Dr. Nelson points out that some third-party genealogy sites support crowd-based research, which means anyone can have access to information that you upload. So read the fine print. Also keep in mind that sharing your DNA means you're sharing the DNA of all your relatives, whether they like it or not. And right now, there is limited regulation over how that information can be used down the road. So fun, but not necessarily precise. Fun, entertaining, and precise to a point. Oh. On the continental level. There you All go. All right, good to know, good to know. Thanks, Connie. Thank you.